So, Andrea, I got to be honest. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is a is a complex sell for a video game. I mean, it's not your typical apocalypse that everybody loves. It's all, you know, you have to have explosions and aliens and monsters and everything. This is literally everybody's just gone. Like, and, and everybody. So maybe you're led to believe that you are the last person in, uh, that is in this game world. So uh, what were your expectations going into this game and what, and what was it like? I'm kind of the same as you. I went into it really kind of confused about what the game was. I'd seen a couple of demos and seen some trailers and heard a little bit about it, but I went in completely ready to not like this game, to be like, you know what, this just isn't my type of game, it's too slow, it's too exploration based, and I came away really impressed. So the Chinese Room is probably most well known for Dear Esther. This title is being co-developed with SCE Santa Monica Studio, it's going to be a PlayStation 4 exclusive which is really cool for PlayStation 4 owners. And the game itself is really different than a lot of other games I've seen before. So as you mentioned, yes, it's the apocalypse. We don't exactly know what kind of apocalypse happened. You figure that out by piecing together clues over the course of the game. But I will say that there are hints that you're not the only person left in the world. So I was on this one environment and I had the ability to explore it a little bit, this little cozy English town. It was really important to the development team to really get that authentic English village feeling. It's set in the year 1984, very specifically. They said, we're not just set in the 80s, we're set specifically in 1984. Um, and all of the environments reflect that. And the detail in the graphical environments is really fantastic. It's really immersive, just walking through the world at you know your own pace and exploring is immersive in a way that I wasn't expecting. So in the game, you have two main mechanics, if you were. So one mechanic is using the triangle button to interact with certain things. You don't know what you can interact with, so I kind of felt myself really going to every like nook and cranny in the world and trying to interact with things. And I asked the development team, I said, are there going to be any kind of visual indicators so I know what I can and can't interact with? And he said that they're still tweaking that a little bit. For example, if you go inside of a building, there are a variety of doors that you can interact with. And if you can't go through one, they, it just makes like a locked, like you're jiggling the lock kind of a sound. But I had kind of asked him, I said, well, I don't want to waste my time like going to every single door in every single building to see if I can open it. And he was like, well, that's part of the game, right, is this whole idea of exploration. But I didn't really like that kind of game mechanic doesn't excite me. How do you feel about it? So, so it sounds like if the apocalypse happened, that would be your number one concern is that all you have all this wasted time. You know, it's like it's one thing that you have to forage for food, you know, and, uh, you know, look for survivors and clues as to what happened. But, man, I mean, if you can't do that in an expedient way, then I mean, what's the point? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a tough sell. Like, I've definitely played a lot of games like that with no map, you know, where you're just kind of forced to just go around and kind of piece together the environment um, on your own. Had you played Dear Esther? before? Um, I played Dear Esther very briefly, and when I say briefly, I mean for like 20 minutes. So you could say that I have not played Dear Esther. But exploration seems like really what they're all about. It's kind of like that's their form of storytelling, which makes me wonder, based on the title, I mean, you can maybe like, you know, get to hints of this later, that I could easily see you, that you don't actually bump into anybody else, that, that they're really into having the story come from the environment and come from this world uh, and this very peculiar apocalypse. So on one hand, yeah, that would make it a lot easier you know, for me to tell. Uh, I remember even Silent Hill, the original one on PlayStation, would mark the doors very succinctly of, of where you've been and where you haven't, and I still had no idea where I was going. So <laughs> it's, it's one thing to kind of, you know, and, and there is a little bit of tension and fear in that, and that you don't know where you are and you're not familiar with the surroundings. But at the same time, you know, like, I want to get through it. So um, I don't know how much of that I could take. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to check the game out. Did you get any actual clues as to other people you're going to bump into, or, or do they tease anything like that? Yes, definitely. So there is actually a map that you can pick up. You have to go find it. There was a long line of people waiting for this particular demo, so I didn't you know, want to take any more time going to look for the map specifically. I wanted to see as much of the environment as possible. But there is a map that you can find that helps guide you along. And so you learn about the other people in the world through these different interactive uh, scenes, and they use the six axis controls and the DualShock 4 in order to unlock them. So you'll approach a specific area and you'll see like this glimmering like gold 
um, like thing flying in the air. And once you approach it, you use the six axis to kind of unlock it. And they've um, tweaked the difficulty on that. He told me when they originally were um, introducing these gameplay elements to players that weren't part of the development team that people found them too difficult to unlock so they've kind of scaled them back a little bit which I thought was kind of interesting but through those interactive elements you unlock audio logs essentially that kind of give you more details as to who lived in this town who these people were what they were doing um, one of the quotes that um, the development team gave me was they want this story to be about the cranky old lady next door, teenagers in love and worried parents. Sometimes you'll hear about the horrific and terrible things that happen to them, which really makes it more of an immersive experience. And I, thought, and I actually got to experience that with one of these moments. I was inside of a house and I unlocked this interactive thing and I hear this woman and this man talking to each other. Um, and then you see like bloody tissues on the ground and you're kind of trying to piece together about did something happen was somebody attacked or did somebody just get this random nosebleed like is everyone just bleeding everywhere because I saw puddles of blood in several different parts of the world and so it's it's a really interesting way to unfold a narrative and um, it's it was more immersive than I was anticipating I know I've said that word before but like I wasn't expecting to be drawn in as quickly as I was, but I was like hooked within 10 minutes. So, uh, well, 10 minutes, how long do you think the game is going to end up being? How long do you think an experience like that would hook you? It's hard to say because unlike Dear Esther, which was pretty linear, this is ex completely open world. So you could, you know, essentially speed run through it and, you know, like sprint through the world trying to unlock everything to move on to the next area and, and find out more about what's happening or you could take your time and really just walk around and enjoy the beautiful environment. I commented that the score that they did, the original score with, you know, they even have vocals on it too, was just beautiful. It was really gorgeous music and they've incorporated some new music since the last demo that they showed. And it makes you kind of want to just hang out in the world in a way. You don't really want to rush through it. And I think that's a testament to the Chinese room and the work that they've done in creating this world. So yeah, it sounds like a pretty chill place. It sounds like the apocalypse isn't that bad, you know? It sounds like a pretty, it's pretty calm. You know, maybe some horrible things have happened to some people, but not you, you know? So uh, uh, yeah, did you, did you ever get a sense of danger or was it really just, I have to figure out what's happening, I have to explore? It wasn't a sense of danger, but it was more of like a psychological um, sense of, scaredness that's not the word that's not even a word um like think about if you think about horror movies like i mean there's a bunch of different brands but that like that psychological thriller is almost more where this is going than outright gory violence and i never felt like in danger like i needed to run from an enemy like i never interacted with another like npc for example but like some of the things you unlock are pretty harrowing some of these you know narrative elements that these people that you hear these ghosts almost of these people that are in the world that you can listen to and that in and of itself is really creepy in a way and i haven't seen enough of the game to know exactly how scary those moments get but if the development team is saying that you're going to hear horrific and terrible things happening to them i have to imagine it's going to get exponentially worse so yeah searching for doors will it'll heighten that experience you know, if you save those audio logs for the for the lowest points of the game then I think everything else will, will balance out, Andrea. I think this is how you, how you have to approach it. <laughs> if you go into a new area and you see lots of doors, you're like, oh, I gotta check these things. I'll just you dig through there and find a good one. Well, I mean, you it. can't you can't move on to the next area until you unlock each of the different narrative elements. So, I mean, oh, okay. exploration is is a key part of the game. So, if you're not into exploration, then this is probably not the game for you. And I'll even say, like, I came into it thinking it wasn't the game for me, and I was surprised by how quickly I was drawn into it and just how much I wanted to keep learning more and more about the world. And I know it's been in development for quite some time, but they said it's hopefully coming um, sometime later in 2015, as I said, exclusively to PS4. That'll be interesting to see who this game is for and whether we can like communicate that to uh, our community when we uh, hopefully review the game down the road. But uh, it sounds like you're intrigued, so you probably check this out when it comes out. Oh, yeah, definitely. I wasn't going to before, but I am going to now. Well, you've, you've intrigued me too. Now I want to check it out. Thank you, Andrea.